Well, hello and welcome aboard, everybody. It's Rob from PMDG. Episode 2 of our DC-6 tutorial series for Microsoft Flight Simulator. The subject of today's tutorial, we're going to be talking about the view controls within the simulator. We've shipped the product with a number of pre-configured views for you. We put these together based on what we know of how you will move around the cockpit when operating the airplane. So I'm going to show you how that all works. I'm also going to show you how to customize it a little bit. Uh, if you're like me, you probably have specific preferences to how you like to control your views, so we'll give you a little bit of insight on how that works as well. So we start off by going to the view controls, and you're going to notice that I have a custom keyboard profile that I set up for my own use when I'm flying. It's right up here. I also have another keyboard profile for when I'm working on development, but I've also saved the default profile just in case I need to go back to it for some reason. Now I strongly recommend you come down here and press this expand collapse button just to compress this whole menu down and cleans it up. It makes it easier to find what you're looking for. For example, we want to go in here into the camera controls and take a look at the mode switches. We'll use this as an example. On the, the left column here, these are the default keys, and on the right column, if you've bound a key to a control, you'll see it over here. Now there's a million reasons why you might want to bind a key to a, a specific function. In, in my case, I do it primarily because I'm lazy. You'll see back in my profile here, we've got the default Microsoft ones, and then on the right, we've got ones that I've chosen. You'll notice I'm using the S key, and I, I did that because that's the key we've used going back like 16 generations of flight simulator to change the view. So rather than having to learn something new, I just bound in there what I'm used to. And that'll come in handy if you wish to set up controls like I've done in here. You know, it's always handy to be able to move the viewpoint around inside the cockpit. So I've gone and set up um, the ability to translate the cockpit view around up and down, left and right. And I, I did that just by assigning things here. And you know, you'll want to do that and find a way that makes sense to you for your flying and usage style. Now, in the DC-6, when we shipped the product to you, we included a number of pre-configured cockpit views, and we set these views up specifically to enhance the workflow throughout the flight deck. A DC-6 is usually a two- or three-man crew airplane, depending on the operator, you're going to have the joy of operating it by yourself, so you need to really leverage the view system to maximize your advantages. And we've done that for you. I'm going to show you how that works now, and I'm also going to show you how I set it up on my computer to match my needs. Uh, I'm left-handed, so I tend to like the view controls to be under my right hand, and that tends to mean putting them on the numpad. So that's the example that we're going to use. You can set it up any way you'd like. Uh, you might you know, want to set it up under certain keys or along a certain row. Whatever makes sense to you, the same theory applies. But let me show you how that works here. Now, going into the cockpit camera profile, you'll see that there's 10 slots here that you can load a custom camera view. Currently, you can access those views by pressing the Alt key plus the number that's assigned next to it. You can see those in the Microsoft column on the left there, these right here. A little hidden gem, you can access them by pressing Control plus that key as well, um, and that will function as a key binding. But you can also put your own key binding in here. So if you're like me and you want to assign them to the numpad, for example, pulling up my keyboard profile to show you so you can see I've got these views bound to the numpad so I could use the alt and uh, the number or I could just tap the numpad and that to me is significantly easier. Now as you exit out be sure to apply and save so that you can save your key bindings. Now one more item that's important to your setup if you have not already configured the sim to allow you to move the head around, let me show you how you do that. Because it's it's important to flying the DC-6. So I've pulled up my keyboard profile here, and we're going to go right into the camera settings. 
in the cockpit camera, if you scroll down, you'll see that there are controls to translate the view up, down, left, and right. And we want to set in some key bindings to allow you to do that. Now, this is my profile. You don't have to do it this way, but you'll notice that I deleted the default Microsoft settings because they don't work for me because of the way my keyboard's set up. But instead what I did, so you can see here in the default profile that Microsoft has them set up that way, I wanted them set up differently. So I came in, set up my own keyboard profile, I deleted the Microsoft ones, and then I installed my own here. And that just gives me a, a set of keys that I can manipulate with my right hand to control the position of the head inside the sim. Now, why is this important? Okay, let's take a look. When we're inside the sim, occasionally, when you go to look at something, like the fuel selectors on top of the center pedestal, you'll notice these red knobs block your ability to read the placard underneath, so you don't know what position they're in. So what we do is we just translate the head forward a little bit. Now you can read that placard perfectly clearly, so you know exactly where to set the knob to get the response that you want from the system. So a combination of stored views and the ability to move the head around will make this airplane extremely easy for you to fly. Now, one of the things that you will see a lot uh, when flying airplanes of this caliber is that the pilot who is setting power will generally lean over the pedestal to get his head right behind the engine gauges in order to set the engine power accurately. Now, the reason why that happens and the reason why we've given you a view position that emulates that is because of parallax error. If you look at the manifold pressure gauges from this position here, leaned in front of the, the gauges, you'll notice that these manifold pressure needles are pointed straight up at the number 30, so 30 inches of manifold pressure. If you move the position back to the flying position, and then we'll sort of turn the head to the right and down and zoom in a little bit so that you can see, you'll notice that the engine gauges look like they're lined up just a little bit differently. This is called parallax error. And I'll give you a better view of it here. You can see from the pilot's view position, that needle looks like it's slightly to the right of 30 inches. That amount of inaccuracy is not acceptable when setting power on radial engines. You want that number to be on 30, that's where the needle needs to be. So by using head position 2, you can get there. Now, this is head position 3. This position is showing you the top of the pedestal. As I showed you earlier, it allows you to get a good view of the placards related to the fuel system, and it also allows you to get a good view of your engine and propeller controls so that you can manipulate things in fine detail by switching to this view and then clicking on any of those buttons that you might need to access in order to adjust RPMs and things like that. Now, we also gave you a position that's as if you were sitting in the pilot seat looking down into your right. And we did that because this is the view that you would have sitting in the pilot seat looking down at the back side of the pedestal for the controls that are there. For example, your autopilot is turned on by this button and this lever and then this button up here. So we gave you a view that'll let you grab those pretty simply and, and pretty easily. And we think you'll find that it's easier to use that pre-configured button than it is to try to slew the view around like that. So, all right, there you go. Using the button to look right down at it. It's nice, easy, and direct. And you'll notice right here, that's a hydraulic control, that's a hydraulic control. And again, this view just gives you a really great way to reach for things that are down here. Um, for example, I hope you don't have a day bad enough to use this, but the fuel dump levers, May you never need to use them, but hitting button number four will take you right to this view so you've got quick and easy access to the controls that are back here that you might need. But sometimes it's better to have a straight on view. So we gave you button number five, just is essentially the flight engineer's view of the back of the center pedestal. And from here you can operate your mixture controls, your carb heat controls, 
You've also got your aileron trim wheel there. Um, all of those controls are a little bit hard to manipulate looking down on them, but when you get into button number five there, that'll help you. All right, next up, we're going to go across the top of the overhead panel. And this is button number seven, and it's up into your left, and if you set your views up on the numpad like I did, that'll help you out. But these are your test buttons for the fire control system. Uh, fire warning system, I'm sorry. Uh, and those are all up in the upper left eyebrow panel. And here's the controls and indications for all your anti-ice and that sort of thing. And so if you need any of that, you just hit button 7 and there you are. You're looking right at it. Button number 8 is the center of the eyebrow panel. This is button number 9, which is the top right of the eyebrow panel. Button number 6 gives you the entire overhead panel and then you can zoom in or out to manipulate controls as you need. Back to button one in the pilot's position. Button number two, button number three, four, five, seven, eight, nine, six, and then one last one here. That's button zero, and that takes you down here so you can use the tablet if you need it. But by configuring those that way and setting them up in a manner that makes logical sense to you on your keyboard, you can move around the, the cockpit pretty quickly and easily as you've seen just there. Okay, now we're going to do something fun. This is a little something I stumbled into in the view control system for Microsoft Flight Simulator that allows you to glance around the cockpit quickly. For this test, let's just assume for a moment that, uh, well, let's put the ship on ground power, it'll be easier. So. Get the push to test, that works, battery power's on, ground power connector's closed, the ship is now on ground power. So let's say for a moment, we want to test the fire control and indicating systems, which are all right here. The test buttons for those are above our head to the left, up here, that's view seven. We push the button and then we glance back down, we might miss the function test because it happens fairly quickly. So we want to be able to glance back to where we were and then glance up to where the buttons are. And the way we do this is by go to the main view, and pivot your head so that you get the view that, that you think you need to be able to see them. So for example this. Now hit the button that takes you to this view. Hit it again. Hit it again. And hit it again. And you'll notice that it by hitting the same button repeatedly, it just causes your view to bounce back and forth between the window that you've selected. This is view seven. When you hit view seven again, it goes and looks back at what you were looking at in the previous view. So I recommend trying that. You'll find it comes in really handy, especially when you're running a system test like the fire detection and suppression systems. Now, just a quick demonstration of the translation system. It'll let you move the head forward, back, left, right, up, down, which is fun because you can put together some really nice cinematic sequences. Use the buttons 0 through 9, as we've been discussing, to go to the pre-formatted views. But you can use the translate controls to, you know, do this. I mean, it's art, so it's, you got to spend time looking out the window. I've been flying radial engine airliners for a decade. I still spend a lot of time looking out the window. Anyway, all right, let's turn the power off. I'm hungry. Anybody else hungry? Let's go for lunch. All right, everybody. Thank you for flying with PMDG. Be well. Come back see us soon. Look after one another. We'll see you next time.